Next up, we have Ben Green, who will be speaking about exploring reactive MySQL. So I've been working on this for the last couple of weeks. Um, I would not say it's production ready, but I've got a couple of things working as far as getting a select statement out of your MySQL statement working reactively with Meteor. So today I wanted to show you how to convert the leaderboard example to using a MySQL backend. So let's see, I'll get logged in here. Okay. So I'm going to make the new example leaderboard. Call it my demo. And I've got one new package that works. And basically what you do is you publish a select statement. I don't know if everybody's used MySQL. It's kind of the default. OK. OK, so the first thing, we're going to install the package. Oops. And tell MySQL. And this is on the i3 computer, so not quite as quick as many. And we'll get Meteor started. I've got a couple other Meteors running right now. So port 4000. And let's start changing the code. Oops, that might be too big. So in Mongo, you don't really have to do anything to connect to the database. But with MySQL, we're going to rip out all this Mongo stuff. We don't need that. We'll start by, uh, so we do create a, a handler for our database. Do MySQL.create connection. And in here, we've got to have some uh, database host name. So we got localhost. You got the user is on my local machine here. Don't look at my password. It's really secret. Um, and we've got to have a database. So we'll just call it uh, demo. And let's make that right now. So oops. And how, what do I call it? Um, dash E, create database. Um, database. Oh, did I spell it wrong? Yeah, I did, huh? Create database, my demo. OK. And I've got some demo SQL here. So basically, I'm going to create a table that looks exactly like the leaderboard demo. You got the name, you got a score, and I'm just going to add some players down there. I've got just some scientist names and their scores, so we'll insert that real quick. So instead of this line, we'll just, oops, it's, it's not in this directory, though. OK, oops, forget the database, what I call it, my demo. OK, now let's put the code in. So we're connecting. One thing, this is a wrapper of the node MySQL object, which if you've ever used MySQL with Node.js, all the syntax is exactly the same. I've just added a few extra methods to make it work reactively. So it, it's actually, if you use the PCEL colon MySQL package that already exists with Meteor, you can use this. It's the same interface. You just get the extra options. What's that? Oh, did I do it different here? Yeah, thank you. OK, so db.connect. And now the first part to making it responsive or reactive is um, you got to, this is one of the things that I add is you in, initialize an update table. Oops, I can't spell it all up here. Update table. And you've got to specify a name. So you want to use something that doesn't exist in your database. I've only got one table right now. It doesn't really matter. We'll just call it updates. And so now we've got our database connected, and we've got our update table. We need to start publishing our select statement. So just like you're used to, you can call meteor.publish, and we'll call this all players. OK, so in our publish function, this is where we make our select statement. And this is kind of where the, the main addition to the my, node MySQL package comes in. So we've got a method on our connection called select. And this method takes the first argument 
is your subscription handle, which is the context of a publish function. So that's why we pass this here. It's going to send all of our messages over DDP, just like your Mongo would. Oops. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, that's not right. Not a function. Sorry, object definition. And so in here, we're going to be specifying our query, which is a pretty simple one to get all the players. So we'll select everything from players, order by score descending, just like the original demo. And we're going to set up some triggers. I'm just going to get it right. Triggers, yeah. OK. So we're, one of the things that the package does is it it's going to rerun our query when changes happen, but we don't want to rerun the query all the time. If we've got a query with joins and all kinds of fields in there, it's going to be really slow. So that is not going to work. What we do is we specify triggers. Um, so on this one, we're going to have it anytime anything changes on the players table, it's going to rerun this query. And you can specify it a lot more fine-grained. You can say if just a specific field matches a certain value, then rerun the query, but for this simple demo, we're just going to say table players. OK, so now we've got our triggers. From. We got that. From. Where did I miss from? Star. Oh, yeah, thank you. I'm not quite the SQL expert. OK, so instead of a Mongo collection, we're going to have a new MySQL subscription. And this will automatically call Meteor Subscribe for you, so you don't have to do that extra. Oops. OK, so let's, let's see. What's that? Yeah, I was going to get it up at the same time, and then I was going to show you how this works, and then I'll go through and I'll make the, oh, I'm already out of time. <laughs> OK, we'll make it quicker. OK, so the players function, this one's going to change. Instead of using a, uh, Mongo query here, Oops. what we're going to actually be doing is we're just going to be turning players. Players looks like an array. It's extended from the array object. But in order to make it work reactively, you either have to call dot .depend, or the other method that I've added is called dot .reactive. It does the same thing as tracker.depend would do, except it returns the data as well. So for our players, we just need players.reactive. And to get this one, this one's a little bit more complicated. Oops. So we're going to change it to player. Oh, where'd it go? Players dot filter, because we've got an array of players. We've already got the result here. So I'm going to filter them based on a function. And we'll say return player.id equals our selected player. So then we'll say, this is actually going to be, hopefully it's going to be an array with one item in it. So we need, oops, player. Yeah, that should do that. And so we're, our database in MySQL doesn't have underscore ID. It just has normal ID. Is my computer frozen? This, yeah, see, it's got the data in there. <laughs> and I can. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see. Um, my SQL. So we'll log in. Since I don't have the method hooked up, I'll just do it here. Oh, oh wrong password. And we'll say, so what do I got? Let's. Let's update plank. So we'll say update players set score equals what do we want plank score? 100 where name equals plank. Oops, I got to spell it right. OK, one changed and ah. <laughs> OK, sorry for the overtime. It goes much faster at home. <laughs> Any questions? Questions? 
Um, it's up on GitHub. You go to GitHub slash NumTel slash Meteor MySQL. Um, if you search on Atmosphere, just search for MySQL, you'll see NumTel MySQL in there. I've got an example with the leaderboard up, and it has m method stubs so that these actually happen instantly. You don't have to wait for the poll to come back. And yesterday, I came up with a way to make it work very similar to Oplog. This demo right here is using a polling table through the memory of MySQL. But I actually wrote a function in C that compiles and integrates directly into MySQL, and then it makes a TCP connection back to your Meteor server. So you get instant updates, and you don't have to wait for anything. And that should really help with scaling. As far as doing the polling table, you're kind of limited to one Meteor server connection, because you've got to use a session variable. But it's looking pretty good. If um, anybody wants to help out, I would love to have somebody who knows a lot about MySQL or just has excitement for it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you.